Okodia. Uh, I'm the CEO and uh, the founder of Wimro Biz Company Limited. We, we are into the complete honey value chain. And here we are at one of our apiary. It's, this apiary is having about 100 beehive. It's one of the clusters. We have like four clusters. Each of it has about 100 beehives. Here we have local hive and then KTB basically. I got inspired uh, when I was young, about 21 years old. I was looking for something to earn me an income uh, so I can probably support my parents, pay my school fees. So then I ventured into beekeeping. I started with, with, with five beehives and, and now I have about 500 beehives. After a period of about 10 years now that I've been into uh, beekeeping. Every, every harvesting season, you could generate about 1.2 million from the 10 beehives. So there are farmers who have like 50 beehives, they are able to generate about 3.5 million to 4 million per season. So we have two seasons in a year. So that means they, they get about between 8 million for people with 20 hives and then about 3 million for people with 10 beehives. So there's nothing much you do. After placing your hives, you go do other work. So, so beekeeping is an activity that when you're doing, you don't spend a lot of time on it. You place your hive, you come and do basic uh, management, supervising, see how the bees are flying, and then you go do other activities. What do you do if you want to start up? One, you need to probably raise a capital that can set you a minimum of 10 beehives, that is commercial production. 10 beehives, that's, that's about 500,000. 500,000 you have invested in your beehive, and eventually probably you needed something like a bee suit to protect you, like mine here. When you want to do uh, hive inspection, visit your PR, you need something like this. You need a bee suit, and, uh, and then you need a smoker, you need a, a gloves, you need a good environment, uh, which is far from a public place, uh, probably about 200 meters away from a public place, like schools, market, main road, busy places actually. Uh, we do honey, it's one of our products. We have different packaging. We have export packaging, local packaging for local market, and then also regional market. We have regional packaging. We also do beeswax. Beeswax basically do for export uh, to Japan. And then currently we have got two new innovations. One of them is we are making bee venom honey. It's one of the best um, natural immune boosting product. And uh, it's, it's suppressing a lot of uh, 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 diseases. And, and probably uh, one of them is uh, COVID-19. Two, we are doing a properly throat spray. And uh, basically this also supports your immune boosting and then clean your throat, especially people who move out in the fields. What we are now, our niche is beeswax. Beeswax has export market in Japan and we do 100% for export. Uh, we normally export on a minimum five metric ton of beeswax. That is 5,000 kilograms of beeswax. And, and probably this year, we want to do about uh, 10,000 kilogram, 10, 10 metric ton of beeswax. One of our uniqueness is quality product. We, we have promised to give our clients quality honey products. And that's the uniqueness we have to offer our client the best organic, fresh honey. I started working with 20 farmers who were supplying me with honey. And now we have achieved big number, big volume. Now we are working with 10,000 farmers. And the 20 farmers was producing up to about 1,000 kilograms. But now our capacity with the network we have, we have achieved uh, an annual production of 30 metric ton of honey annually. We have the best honey processing machine, I think, in Africa, honey spinner. So uh, we have just started our journey. We have a big vision. Uh, what we want to see is we want to impact the life of about 30,000 farmers, maybe in, a, in the next 10 years. 
We want to work with 30,000 farmers. We want to improve their livelihood. We want to change their life. We want them to increase on their household income. Now on this show, we are dedicated to teaching you tips, uh, sharing with you tips on how you can make money, keep it and grow it. Now there are many things we can do at home and a bulk of Ugandans are actually in agriculture. There's a lot that we grow in our gardens. There's a lot that we can make from our farms. Now, the key question is, do you have a market for that? Do you practice whatever you're practicing with a market in mind? That's what experts are telling us. Let them fill this market with a good product and make money. And the other part will take it to, to the, to, for export. Please remember export is cross-border. Now, uh, let me tell you, uh, you know Uganda has reached another level. We have always been talking about agricultural products. But now in training we have been talking about value-added products. We are talking even about wines. We saw better wine here. We are talking about packaged eh, food. Eh? Eh? We are talking about packaged drinks, but also we are also talking about uh, very good fruits and vegetables. We are talking about also uh, uh, packaged uh, coffee, packaged tea, but also we are talking about products uh, beyond uh, what you have seen here, all products. Because if Uganda will get uh, out, will be wealthy, because Uganda, not, Uganda tried to get out of poverty during the 90s. Now we are beyond getting out of poverty. We are talking now getting wealthy. If Uganda has to get wealthy, it has to be a market economy. This is the record. Uganda to, be out, to become rich, it's people to get rich. Me, I'm not preaching uh, poverty, I don't know poverty. They have to work in a market economy in a market economy. Everyone must produce knowing that what you are producing is for the market. How I wish we produce at home things we don't consume, sell them in the market, and in the market we buy products we can consume at home. Then you have exchange, then you have trade, then you have marketing, then you get to reach. Please tell everybody that they have to get out of poverty by producing for the market. In our tech segment today, we're sharing with you quick troubleshooting techniques that can help improve your computer usage experience. Today, I'm going to be talking about troubleshooting and the possible problems you may encounter while using your computer. First, many of us have witnessed the problem of your computer being slow and it might be because of a very, very, very serious problem or a number of problems that I'm going to be talking about. First, I'm going to be talking about the hard drive. Um, very many of our computers are using this. It's called an HDD or hard disk drive. So what I would really recommend for many of you to do is use this. So this is an SSD. It is seven times faster than this. This is a solid state drive. It will improve your storage and the speed of the computer. Remember, this is almost seven times better than this. So this can also be used in laptops and desktops. The other reason might be your processor speed. Very many of our computers right now are using cellulone processors, i3, i5, and i7. So most of the time, if your processor is below 1.5 gigahertz, then it is going to be very, very slow. So I'd recommend very many people to actually go and opt for processors that are above 1.5 gigahertz. And which processors are those? It might be an i3, an i5, or an i7. Exactly. So the other problem that you might face is the blue screen. I don't know if very many of you have actually witnessed your screen going blue, with a very long message or an error code on that screen. So basically, this is caused by a number of issues. 
One reason that might cause your screen to actually go blue is pirated software. Um, for those who don't know what pirated software is, this is actually software that has been photocopied or duplicated from original software. So if you took your machine or you downloaded software that was duplicate and is not the original software, you're very likely to go and get that blue screen on your computer. So the other reason that you might get a blue screen on your computer is because you are actually using RAM that is not varying. You may have upgraded your computer maybe to 8 GB RAM, 16 GB RAM, and that RAM may be big or it might not vary with the computer. So that may actually cause a blue screen. And the other reason that may actually cause a blue screen is a faulty hard drive. If you have a hard drive, for example this one, that is inserted in your computer and it's not actually proper functioning or is not compatible, that may also cause a blue screen. And the other thing is you may have been downloading a lot of things um, running on your computer, maybe in the background, and one of these things or this kind of software might be having a malware or a Trojan in any kind of way. But then a blue screen will always bring an error code. This error code actually talks about what is not right about the computer. If it talks about the disk, then it means you have to check the disk. So what you can actually do is you can visit any search engine like Google, Bing, or any website that is computer related and they can actually give you a simple solution to that error code. So if you happen to get any of those issues and before you visit any technician, you can go through those simple steps that I have been outlining. We're glad that you were with us tonight and thank you for being part of the show. I've been your host, Charles Boji. However, we'd like to keep this conversation on as usual. Businesses are going concerned, we always say. So drop us a line or visit us on our digital channels and pick these and more stories. Now, from me and Tim, we'd like to wish you a very good evening. Until next time, have a good evening. God bless you.